right, here we are on the road. We're dropping down into Merritt right now. We're a couple hours. We left two hours ago from home on our first ever family road trip and our first ever electric car road trip. Uh, it was a bit of a start this morning. We squeezed everything in. This will be our first charging stop. Uh, it wasn't scheduled to be the first charging stop, but the chargers in Hope are being upgraded and they turned them off without updating the app to let us know. But thankfully we didn't need that charge to get here. What do you think, Reed? Are you excited to do your first ever road trip? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Artie? <laughs> you excited to do your first ever road trip? <laughs> so here is one of the joys of owning an electric car. So we've been here 15 minutes, if that, just under. We've gone from 88 to almost 300. It'll show 300 in a second. All right, so here we are in Salmon Arm, stop number two on our first day going to Revelstoke. We're about 400 kilometers from home. We're charging again, obviously. And on that stretch, it was a much more efficient stretch. Oh, it all depends on the mountains and the passes and the speed limits and... Nerd alert! Anyways, stop number two, Salmon Arm. Stop here for a bit. We'll be at Revelstoke in our first camping spot. Here we go. We are just outside of Revelstoke, and this is the western terminus of the Canadian Rockies. So it's our first glimpse of the Rocky Mountains for Linda, Artie, and Reed. Can't see anything. There we go. Woo! This bridge moves with the traffic driving across. Nothing freaky about that. I feel like maybe I should move a little bit quicker. All right, we made it to Revelstoke. Day one of our trip in the uh, Road trip to meet the Minotaur and electric car road trip. Seven hours for 500 kilometers, bunch of road construction, a couple of charging stops, but overall, pretty smooth sailing. Uh, Reed only asked, are we there yet? 38 times. So victory, day one in the books. This is amazing. So just decided to go for a run from the campground. No expectations, just looked up trails. There was a trail right out of the campground and ended up coming here in 20 minutes and a piece of Canadian and international history with the ski jumping and skiing history in Canada uh, based out of Revelstoke and great views down over town too. So we're in Golden for our first charging stop of the day on our way to uh, Crow's Nest Pass. We only need to stop here for 10 minutes and there's this field right behind. As soon as Artie got out he bolted because there are gophers <laughs> and we've just been standing here <laughs> watching our kids chase gophers for the next five minutes until we get back on the road again. <laughs> So we're stopped in Invermere, we're charging here. This is one of our favorite stops so far because there's a full market and bathrooms and everything easily available. But I wanted to quickly point out our setup. So off the back of the car, we have this bin and this bin is full of our camping gear and then I have my canopy tent on top. And what works out with this perfectly and accidentally really just by shit luck is it is exactly the width needed this charging cable will just make it to the car if I buck that up just against the backup points. As you can see, it is basically touching and that's exactly enough to get into the regular chargers. So if you're running a similar setup, this actually works quite well, having it off the back about that much right there. Trunk is full of all of our other gear, child, dog, wife. Frunk has a cooler in there. 
and then another soft cooler in here. something really famous and it's hiding just behind these buildings kiddo oh yeah do you see it yet bud yes what do you see that big truck the world's largest truck Checked out the Frank Slide Visitor Center and all the history of Canada's deadliest landslide in 1903 when 90 miners out of a community of 600 perished in the town of Frank, Alberta. 30 metric tons, I think, of rock came down off of the mountain. Pretty incredible to actually be able to see the magnitude of everything. So once again, lucked out with a gracious campsite host who's allowing us to plug in our car on a powered site where someone is not staying the night. But it's a plug I don't have. Even with that massive collection, I don't know what this plug is. So we're just plugged in on basic power and it's gonna take 12 hours to get us up to 400 max, another 117 kilometers. But the good news is it's 7.30 at night. So it'll be fully charged when we wake up in the morning. Our Meet the Minotaur race was delayed by two hours for tomorrow morning start because that is fresh snow right above town. It is snowing in the aid stations today and tomorrow is supposed to be quite nice out. So the two hour delayed start should allow the sun to hit the slopes to start to melt off some of the snows to hopefully still run the full course as designed. Just back at our campground after doing oh, the Meet the Minotaur and the Mini Tour. And the mini tour. <laughs> Quick race summary. Amazing, ridiculous, coolest race ever. Put it on your bucket list. Do it immediately. It was everything it's advertised to be. I basically paid to go scramble two low-level scrambles up mountains plus a third. I got almost 10,000 feet of climbing in 22 miles so 35k 3000 meters and it was legit legit mountain running uh one fall one little cut right here and then they have part of the course they call the shoe shredder so i brought shoes that i was willing to part with and sure as there are shredded shoes from coming down the shoe shredder which was nothing but big sharp scree descent but it was so cool i haven't run scree in years i used to live in banff canmore uh, I love scree descents. And then yeah. Linda got to do the mini tour, which is the 10K, which this started six scary. hours after our race. And I got in in 540, yeah. 540, 530 yeah. something, 540. Yeah. And we had 20 minutes to hand off Reed and the dog <laughs> and for Linda to get in the start <laughs> shoot. Yeah, and then fine. your race was super cool too. It was so cool. It was like, you worry a little bit when the first bit is flat, you just go up, you go straight up and then straight back down. And then you run another flat kilometer back. So. Yeah, 10K from two of those. Canada's toughest 10K. And, and two of those that is also flat, super and legit. And it's 3,000 feet and it's just like, yeah, there were hands and feet sections. My poles away because it was like, I'm not even using these because I need to use my hands too much. And then I used my poles on the whole way down to brace myself because it was like, just straight down. 
they saved my life a couple of times. I just like went to go fall. And you were just over two hours. About 215. 215 yeah. for yeah. for 10k. 10k. On the trails with yeah. 900 meters, 950. I had a 33 minute mile on the way up. <laughs> I had a 33 minute mile too a couple of times. <laughs> and then on the way down, I'm like, wow, I'm flying. I'm doing an 18 minute mile. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna get cleaned up, and then we're gonna head back over because apparently I I managed to get on the old guy podium, which uh, yeah, I'll not I'll never I'm complain so about an old guy podium award. But this race is amazing. Put it on your list. Do it. We, there are lots of little things with this car that annoy me, like it constantly resetting my seat for my wife, even though I'm driving right now. <laughs> <sighs> Maybe it likes the way I drive better.